live on lands that were ripped from the hands and hearts of indigenous peoples. We recognize this strategic and intentional attempt at erasure impacts how we work to repair and heal. I personally am a native woman born and raised in Nuevo Mexico, New Mexico, following five generations on both my paternal and maternal side of Jicaria and Mescalero Apache and Comanche descent. However, I was displaced and homeless and even detained at the age of 14 years old in my homeland. Ultimately, my media family and several generations became gradually disconnected through colonization from our cultural and spiritual herencia. It has been a long journey in reclaiming our indigenous roots after the passing of many of our elders and lost stories and, cult and traditional practices. But the past five years, um, I wanted to share that I have migrated to other lands, such as California, the homeland of the Ohlone people. And today I'm in, I am in Cincinnati, Ohio, sitting on the lands of the Erie tribe, the Kickapoo tribe, and the Shawnee tribe. These tribes do not include all indigenous people who migrated to and through Ohio. And I also want to note that there are no federally recognized Indian tribes in Ohio today. But most Native Americans here were forced to leave Ohio during the Indian removals of the 1800s. I wanted to share that in terms of land acknowledgement, NEA and LISC are committed and have and will be providing to all of our outtown grantees a land acknowledgement workshop in January. This workshop will be led by Gabriel Uyas, um, one of our respected resource team members, who along with Jacqueline Russell encouraged us to deeply reflect on why it's important to open with the land acknowledgement. As we open these learning labs, we have invited three indigenous artists to share a cultural grounding for each day. Today, we are just full of gratitude and a humility to be able to be joined by Ashley Minner. Ashley Minner is a community-based visual artist from Baltimore, Maryland, and an enrolled member of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina. She earned her MFA and MA in Community Arts from Maryland Institute College of Art and her PhD in American Studies from University of Maryland College Park. In addition to maintaining her practice as an artist, Ashley works as an assistant curator for history and culture at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, DC. In her artwork and in her life's work, she is most inspired by the beauty of everyday people and tries to represent us in ways that are honest and in ways that we want to be seen with honor and respect. And so now I'll hand it over to Ashley Minner. Um, Dr. Ashley Minner, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon, everyone. Or good morning, depending on where you are. Um, it's a beautiful, autumn day in Baltimore where I am. Um, and I'd like to invite you all to just get comfortable in your seats. I know we've probably been in a thousand online meetings this week already. It's only Wednesday. Maybe stretch and take a breath. I'll take one with you. I'm coming to you today from the place now known as Baltimore, Maryland, which is part of the ancestral homelands of the Piscataway and the Susquehannock peoples. This is a screenshot from a website called Native Land uh, .ca because it's out of Canada and you can use this as a tool as a first stop to find out whose land you occupy. The process by which the people indigenous to the place now known as Baltimore were dispossessed of this land is historically specific. Um, here's a document recording the process that's sitting in the Maryland State Archives today. This is a detail um, from the 1652 treaty with the Susquehannock whereby the land that would become Baltimore was ceded to the colony of Maryland. The largest group of indigenous people now living in Baltimore are members of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina, like me. Um, we are descended from folks who come from a very wide swath of territory from as far north as the James River in Virginia and as far south as the Great Petey River in South Carolina. And fleeing disease and colonial warfare, uh, we coalesced in a place that's today known as Robeson County, North Carolina, prior to the establishment of the United States. And this is what it looks like there. This is the Lumbee River from which we take our name. It winds its way all through our tribal territory. You can see it's pretty dark and murky, otherwise known as Drowning Creek. And what doesn't look like the river in the swamp looks a lot like this. This is a tobacco field and I took this picture some years ago. Um, even though we see more soybean fields there today. 
And this is a family photo of my mom and my grandmom and my two uncles when they were a farming family in the early 1950s. And a lot has changed since then, but not so much. Um, many Lumbee people were dispossessed of their tribal homeland through the Southern agricultural system and they found themselves sharecropping, which if you don't know what that means, it's like a modern day form of slavery where your whole family works really hard on land that you don't own all year for very little return. And this part of the world was also um, segregated tri-racially. So there were three separate school systems, Indian, white, and black, three sections in the movie theaters, um, complicated place to live. Um, my mom would like me to let you know that they did have clothes. They had clothes. It was a nice summer day when that photo was taken. Nonetheless, a tough place to grow up. And many Lumbee Indians uh, veterans leaving World War II passed through major cities like Baltimore, Philadelphia, and Detroit and realized it would be easier to make a living working in a factory than cropping someone else's tobacco in a segregated place. And so thousands of Lumbee Indians moved to Baltimore, Maryland um, between the 1940s and, you know, even until today, Lumbee folks are back and forth because this became the largest satellite community of Lumbees outside of North Carolina. And here are two Lumbee women standing at one of the main intersections of what we came to affectionately call our reservation in East Baltimore City. Other Lumbees, like my grandfather here, decided he didn't care for the city and moved um, a little southeast immediately. Um, but not far away, we established the Baltimore American Indian Center, and this is still our place, and it's a place where I spent a lot of time growing up and working with young people myself, and I come from a particular people in a particular place, and I share this with you to explain that I carry the river and the fields and the swamps and all of our homeland within me. Uh, we recreated home away from home here in Baltimore, but this place where we live now is also part of who we are. I can't explain to you who I am without talking about Baltimore, but I also have to acknowledge that there are people who have uh, a relationship with Baltimore that predates my own by thousands and thousands of years. And so I invite you to either look at these beautiful autumn leaves or maybe close your eyes and I'm going to read you a series of, of prompts to help you think about your own particular places and your own people, um, because you also come from a particular place and particular people. Think about them. If you don't know them or you haven't known them, think about who they might have been. Where might they be? Where are the bones of your ancestors? Who cares for them and who visits them today? And whose land do you occupy now? Because you're on the bones of somebody's ancestors. They may not be yours, but somebody's. And how are you stewarding that place? Identity is intimately tied to place and memory. Both our personal memories, which include where we have come from and where we have lived, and collective memories, which are interconnected with the histories of our families, neighbors, coworkers, and communities, come to be part of who we are. You are in a physical relationship with the place you occupy. Think about your body and how it exists in space. How big are you? How small are you? What does the air feel like around you? How do you exist in this particular time of year, which is a time for reflection and a time for stories? So I'd like to encourage you to learn some stories, learn your stories and share your stories. Take one more big deep breath. and stick around because the next part of today will start shortly. And I thank you for allowing me to share with you.
this this afternoon. Thank you so much, Ashley. We honor you and your ancestors and the time that you um, have given us today.